When you create a pivot table, Excel creates a copy of the source data and stores it in a special part of your computer's memory, known as the pivot table's cache. And this helps to improve performance and reduce the size of your workbook. When you have more than one pivot table in a workbook, if two or more of the pivot tables share the same source data, those pivot tables will also share the same cache, which will also help improve performance. However, there is a downside and in this video I'll explain what the problem is and how to resolve it. Here I have a pivot table which is based on a table called Sales 2015 and that table covers the range A1 to D600 in this sales data sheet. The pivot table has been grouped based on month. I'll now create another pivot table and I'll deliberately base it on the same data source as the first pivot table. So go back to the data source, select insert pivot table, leave the data source set to sales 2015 and specify where I want the pivot table to go. I'll put it there starting in D1 and click OK. For the row headings, I want the order date, so I'll drag the order date into the rows section. And with this being Excel 2016, and I've brought a date field into the rows section, it automatically groups by month and also has the order date there. So if I want to, I can show the individual days. But I don't want the individual days, I just want months. So I'll drag the order date field away. And for the values, I want a revenue. Now I want to group this pivot table by week. So if I right click in one of those cells with a month name in, select group, and then change the grouping to days, but set the number of days to seven, that will group it by week. Click OK. Because both pivot tables share the same data cache, Anything you do regarding grouping affects both pivot tables. So what I'll do is I'll create another pivot table and show you how to avoid the issue. You don't start this pivot table in the source range. You start this pivot table in a blank cell. Any blank cell will do, but I'm going to use the cell where I want the pivot table to go. I then press Alt and D followed by the letter P. So what does that do? Well, prior to Excel 2007, in the days before the ribbon, to create a pivot table, you would use the pivot table wizard. And although this functionality is hidden in Excel 2007 and later, for compatibility purposes, Microsoft made it available by pressing Alt and D and then P. And the logic behind this is that in the pre-ribbon versions, you would bring up the data menu, hence Alt and D, and then select pivot tables, which could be done with a mouse or by pressing P on the keyboard. On step one of the wizard, leave it set to Microsoft Excel list or database and click on next. And in step two of the wizard, specify where the data is. And I could just go back to the sales data sheet and highlight A1 to D600, or I can type in the name of the table in this case, because the pivot table is going to be based on the table called sales 2015 and click on next. And when it comes up with a message that asks you if you want to share the data cache, click on no. And then step three, specify where you want the pivot table to start. And I'll click on G1 and click on finish. I'll now bring in the fields I want. So I'll drag order date into rows, drag order date away. So I'm just left with months, drag revenue into values. And this pivot table now is independent of the other two. So if I decide to group Let's say I'm going to group on three days, not a week, but three days. So every three days I want to group, click on OK. 
and it's set that pivot table to group in blocks of three days, but it's left the other two pivot tables alone because the third pivot table has its own data cache. Thank you for watching. I hope that's been useful. And for more Excel tips and tricks, please visit theexceltrainer.co.uk.